day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. They fell, they was cast out, sent to Babylon, northern tribe was scattered throughout the whole world because they failed to follow the laws. And you're going to sit there and try to put the laws on people? You're going to sit there and preach the laws on people? What's the, what, what is it that you're supposed to preach? The good news of deliverance. That's what you're called to do. Now, that, that seems like you should stay on track of that. Now, I know some people say, well, if I, if I sit there and just tell them, put the fear of God and talk about the hell and the stuff. How about the love? How about the love of God? Is it easier? If, if well, I'm going to tell you something, let me put it in perspective here. If that's your ministry, if that's what called, God called you to do, you go do it because there are people who absolutely need to hear the wrath of God. But if that's not your call, or somebody else is called to preach the love of God, then I think we should respect one another. That's what he said to love one another is that your calling is one way, my calling is another. My call is not to condemn. Because I'm going to share the scripture with it, that same thing with Christ. He said, I didn't come to, I didn't come to condemn the world. I come to save it. That's what the scripture said. And he told us to go preach the good news. For what? For people to be saved, to receive salvation. That's what he called us to do. Man, you, like I said, if you're called to, to be like John the Baptist, if you're called to, to preach the law, if you call to call out sin, do that. If that's your calling. But don't put down somebody else who called to put a whole balanced perspective on the message. To be able to sit there and say, the scripture said, listen, people that 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 into different areas of sin, he said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We know that. She should preach that. We should also preach deliverance. You should also preach that the weapons of warfare are not caught, but mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You should preach that. You should, and, and I don't have a problem. One of my friends was talking about saying we, we should know about all the different people and the different curves that God put on people. We should know that these people are operating even today. And I, and I tell them, that if you want to know, you can know them. But your focus is to grow in the things of God. The focus is for you to overcome the errors that causes you to sin, causes you to fall short. <clears throat> your focus is to study the whole word of God. So, I mean, there's nobody that my friend talking about, he thinks he's going to be hiding. No, no. Preach the full gospel. Preach what Jesus did and that he has delivered us. <clears throat> We're not the... Uh, we're not Old Testament saints. We use Old Testament saints for learning. All scriptures are there for the useful, the beautiful, for the proven. And what I like you to do is look at what did people do to deserve the wrath of God? What did people do to reserve the prophecies of, of, of destruction? Because you want to be able to say, I want to avoid those things. But I am not the hand of God to go ahead and, and, and render justice he said to study to show yourself approval to God and, and therefore go and study the whole concept of God and to make sure people understand he did not call us to hate, he called us to love. That's what the fruits of the spirit is, right? He tells that the holy, the comfort come and the comfort is going to break his character and dwell in us <clears throat> so people can see what's in us, amen? So let's go back to the, uh, the, 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 the scriptures. Come on, man, you get this. This is important. Look right here. This, this little subtitle here says right there, Jesus came to save the world. Whether you want to, to, to do it, however you feel you can get somebody saved, that, then I will respect your calling. 
Because if he, that's what he gave you, the anointing, the gift to do, you do it. If he came, you called you to go and point out people that, that, that were cursed and you identify them, go ahead and do it. That's what your calling is. But don't put down the people who call and try to follow the pattern of Christ. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. So if you look at John 12, starting in verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth, he, what did he say again? Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me, meaning God, Almighty, the Creator, heaven and earth. And he that sees me, sees him that sent me, meaning you see Jesus, you see God the Father. Huh? What is, that? what is Jesus trying to say? If you see me, then you see the Father. Right now, I'm, I'm here as the Son. I'm here in flesh. So that you can see me. But as you see how I operate, how I do things, then you see the Father. And that's one of the things, that, oh, even for us as believers, we want people to see Jesus in us instead of us. We want to give God all the glory. We want to give the Son the glory. We want the Holy Spirit to get the glory. Not that seeing you, but seeing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What do you mean? Well, that's why you said bear the fruits of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such there's the law. That's what he wants people to see in you. Or the fact is to love one another. Because then he said, you'll see my disciples based on how they love one another. Listen what the words say. This is not words written, read, read to, to say, push, go, live by your emotions. Because that's not a, what the word said. The word said to do my commandments. That's what the word said. That's what's written. And if you if you take the word and, and you got this calling to, to, to condemn people or to, to, to make them feel uncomfortable, that's your calling. But I'm trying to tell you, we should, they should still see Christ in you, the hope of glory. They should see him. And you go ahead and do the condemning. You can go ahead and sit there. Let me show you what this sin is. You shouldn't do it. But they need to see Jesus in you, just like Jesus, just like Jesus said, you see the Father in him. If they can't see Jesus, if they can't see the Father, if they can't see the Holy Spirit, then you need to check your ministry. Because when it says Christianity means Christ-like, anointed-like, do what the word says. Look at this in verse 47 or 46. I am I have come a light into the world. That whosoever believes on me should not abide where? In darkness. And if any man hears my words and believe not, I judge him not. You know what I'm coming from? I, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. If you are Christ's life, and if Christ is not coming to judge the world, but to save the world, where is it that you come to judge and condemn? Where did we get off message that it's important to judge and condemn when he was not called to judge and condemn? He's saying it right here, isn't he? You want to preach something, you want to try to turn someone away from something, then show them the salvation. They should see Jesus. Uh, please get this message. This message is more important than any other message. Jesus said in verse 47, and if any man hears my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me. Listen. So, I mean, when you preach the gospel and they reject it, look at this. He that rejects me and receives not my words. He that rejects you, preaching the word of Christ. He that receives, does rejects you, 
preaching what the Father sent us to preach. He said in verse 4, that he that rejects me receiveth not my word has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. Listen to what the word is saying. He gave me a commandment. Come on now. God gave Jesus a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Jesus gave us a commandment. Go, preach, and teach the gospel. Every message you have should have the gospel in it. The good news, the deliverance, salvation. Jesus didn't preach to go sin. He died for our sins. So when he said love one another, he's not preaching. That's not what he preached, therefore I don't preach it. But he said to love one another. For he said, verse 49, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father would set me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment, what, is life everlasting. Whosoever I speak or whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said to me, so I speak. Sound to me is that we're supposed to do the same thing, right? We're supposed to follow the pattern of Christ. Christ said, the Father sent me. Jesus sent us. He did it in Matthews. He did it in Mark. He said, go, preach, teach the gospel, the good news. I'm just telling you, this is what Jesus said. The Father sent him. Jesus sent us. Jesus gave us his word, which he got from God. So therefore, shouldn't we be doing what he told us to do? Now, I know some people want to get that message. Well, no, you need to know this and you need to know that. You need to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. You need to know that. And you need to know what his commandments are. Because those commandments are what God gave him. Just saying. That's very important. What he said is what he received and gave to us from generation to generation to do. That is what a Christian is. Now, if you want, if you're not a Christian and you want to be an Old Testament saint, then you got right, you got a whole new different ball game. And then what you while you're doing your ball game, you need to stand and say, oh, by the way, uh, we couldn't, we couldn't do, we couldn't keep those commandments. But we still think you should do it too. You should try as well. Try and fail, just like us. Huh? You should do the things that you should you should follow these laws because it doesn't work, but you should do them anyway. If that's what you want to do. If that's what you call to do, because you can't find eternal life by the law. But you can find eternal life by love. And following Jesus Christ. God is love. And God sent Jesus. And Jesus said what the Father told him. And we have been called to preach the, what Jesus was told by the Father to say. Yeah, you go by your flesh, you go by the past, you go by the history and all this stuff people are together. You can do that. But I'm telling you, believer, if you say you believe it, do what the word says. Because that's what we're called to do. Luke 4, 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now, listen. Not only was it prophesied in the Old Testament, Jesus executed what was written in the prophecy of Isaiah. And when it opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Maybe some of y'all understand, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, that Holy Spirit is also on you. Came on the day of Pentecost and has not stopped since. For those who believe us, he, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the good news to the poor. 
Now y'all sometimes think poor is just money. No, poor in spirit, poor in lacking of things. But it's not, it's not, it's not just financial. But he said that, look what Jesus said he was anointed to do. Look what Jesus gave us a commandment to do, to go preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And how many people, because of this world system, have their hearts broken? He said, I come to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Captives of what? Captives in sin, captives in strongholds, captives in, in all horrible things that can happen in this life. And he said, recover the sight to the blind. Not just physical blindness. We're talking about that God is where is blinded them that are lost, perishing. He said, I came to, to do recovery of the sight of the blind, and we have that mission now. Look at it. To, to preach and to see the set of liberty, them that are bruised. To preach, listen again. The acceptable year of the Lord. We were told to go preach the gospel. Jesus was prophesied to preach the gospel. Jesus sat there and closed that book because he said, that's what I was called to do. And he told us to do. That's what the word said, man. That's why in John 14, I put up here 15, or 14 verse 15 and 16, if you love me, Keep my commandment. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and he may abide with you forever. If you love me, keep my commandment. Huh? What did he command you to do? That's all I'm trying to say. If you want a mission statement, I am, look, he did not call you to go preach and say, do what you want to do to sin. He did not. He called you to preach the power and the anointing of God. One of my, one of my, one of the, one of my great friends in ministry, in, in ministry said, what is to be loved and say is, forget not my benefits. Preach the good news that they are no longer strangers and foreigners to the covenant, but are brought nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. That we are now joint heirs with the same thing that the children of Israel has. That's the gospel, man. That's the blessing. Huh? Man, come on. Look. I gotta come off for a second. He told us. We are brought nigh. We are one time strangers and foreigners to the covenant. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are now joint heir with Christ Jesus. We're now part of the covenant of the children of Israel. We're now part of the people of Abraham. Huh? We're not under the law. Gee, Abraham was not under the law. Because it's not the law. The law is a schoolmaster. And some of us still want to be schoolmasters. And some of us need the cool schoolmaster. But we need to understand we can be delivered through the power and the anointing. That's what a crystal, that's what, that's what Christ means, the anointing. It is the anointing to deliver us. It is the anointing to give us righteousness. It is the anointing to give us the power to overcome the bad things of this world. It is the anointing. See, just preach that to the people. You could preach it. I mean, I ain't no problem with you preaching. Hey, man, you're supposed to stay. You're, you're supposed to slap that woman in the refrigerator. You're supposed to commit an adultery. And if you're talking about sexual orientation or something like that, you tell them, say, look what God's plan, original plan was. And why don't you follow him? And if he made you that way, then we just have to go and do and pray for you to be what God wants you to be. And if God made you that way, then all I can do is still say, follow and trust in him. He will direct your path. Not me. I can't direct your path. But do what he called you to do. And if you do the things and pray and continue this word, hey man, 
I, I, I have no doubt whether you are straight or gay, <laughs> straight or gay, whether you, when you're, you know, whether, whether you're uh, heterosexual or, or, or not. Because the heterosexual got issues with adultery and fornication, right? Hey, I'm just saying everybody got drunkenness issues, got anger issues, got, you know, a whole bunch of issues, right? As a person. But if we continue in this world, that's where we change. But we can't change each other, try to condemn one another, all that stuff. You, especially when you have issues too. If you have issues, tell them your issues. Tell them your fault. Because if you got stronghold, maybe the thing that you recognize as a stronghold, you can at least tell them how you're coming out of your stronghold. But how about that? How about that? It's not to say that people can't change because you change. You change under the power of the knowing of the Holy Spirit. Let people know that. Instead of sitting there trying to condemn them. I'm just saying this. Listen, and that's what, once again, there's some people I guess they're called to do that, do it. But I'm just telling you what I'm called to do. And I'm trying to tell you what Jesus was called to do. Followed Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to follow but by me. We're not telling you to stay in the world. Because you're not of the world, you're in the new kingdom. Amen? So therefore, you want to learn what the kingdom is like and how to operate and walk in the kingdom. But the first thing you have to do is receive Jesus Christ, the first Lord and Savior. You have to do that. And as you do that, now allow him to be Lord in your life. Allow him to direct your path. Then we'll see, not because it's for us, it's for him. And he will direct your path. That's, and that's what we need to do. Get people on the path. Help people get on the path. But understand, it's Christ. It's the anointed of the Holy Spirit. It is the will of the Father. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So, no endorsing of any sin. See, that's why I want to make sure I understand. Some people sit there and think that you 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 was the target of one area. No, you target all the areas. Because if you sin at one point, you sin at all. Is that what the scripture said? So why we sit there and be, if some people in your church sit there and yell and shout and say, yeah, get those people. You sit there at one point, you sit at all. So you need to sit there and say, they're talking about you. Get you too, huh? Come on, man. Let's do it right. Let's focus not on, on people, focus on Christ. And help them and help yourself be delivered because of Christ. 